In this video, I will be breaking down the high converting landing page that consistently turns clicks into customers. And it doesn't matter the industry that you're in, this page always converts. So if you've rebuilt your homepage countless times without seeing a drastic lift in conversions, just try this. Okay, so I have an example landing page or homepage as, as you could also call it in Figma. And I'm going to walk through the different elements on this page, how it is structured so that you know how to better optimize your homepage so that you can increase your conversion rate and reduce your acquisition costs. So I'm going to zoom in here. And obviously we have a simple nav bar. I'm not gonna go too much into that. Just make sure that your nav bar has only four or five maximum items just so that you don't make it too busy. All right, so now we have our header section here. With our headline, we want to make sure that it is benefit driven. When someone comes to your homepage, you want them to very easily see what you do and how it benefits them. Not necessarily a feature that is tied to your product. We want a benefit that is tied to your product. So for example, an email marketing software, a feature would be unlimited lists under like a free plan or something. Now that's a feature, but it's not necessarily a benefit. So a benefit would be grow your email list without any caps or something similar. I'm just riffing off the top of my head right now. But if you position your offer in terms of the benefit that it gives the customer, you're automatically going to get more conversions. Then always we always have a subtitle that is going to support our headline. And then we're going to have uh, a call to action. Now, we usually like to have a double call to action. So a primary CTA, that could be like a sign up, request a demo or something similar. And then the second call to action is there in case the person isn't quite sold yet on your product and they want to learn more. So you want to take a step back, look at your entire funnel and you want to see based on calls you've had with clients or based on social media, what is the number one question people have about your product? And then make sure your secondary call to action links to a, a specific piece of content that is going to answer that question. So as we scroll down, we also have some social proof here. So within the header section, ideally before they, before they have to even scroll down the page, you want them to see number one, what is the benefit to them of your product? how they can get started, and third, some social proof. If you can bundle all three of those items in the header section of your website, your conversions will automatically see a big lift. But we're gonna continue going down the page. So a lot of people get the hero section correct, but they, the, the rest of the page kind of falls apart. We want to have an equal a balance of features, testimonials and uh, helpful information so that the person one can make an informed decision on your product. They know what they're buying and also they can see social proof, which also builds pr trust in your company. And um, if you've ever read the book, the Wolf of Wall Street, or no, it's called the way of the wolf. It's written by Jordan Belfort. He talks about there are three categories that a person has to have high certainty in, in order to buy from you. The first one is certainty in yourself, the salesman, or this could be the, uh, the website. The second one is high certainty in your product. And the third one is high certainty in your company. If they have a 10 out of 10 certainty in each one of those categories, they're going to buy from you. If they don't buy from you, it's because they lack certainty in one of those areas. So one, we want to have high certainty on your web page that is having a clean layout, have, a ver have consistent branding, um, appear as a reputable company. Uh, for the high certainty in terms of your product, that's where we want to list out the features and the benefits um, so that they can make an informed decision because whether you like it or not, they're going to be comparing your product with the product of other companies similar to you. And in the third category, you want them to have high certainty in your company. So that is including social proof, such as reviews, logos of people you've worked with, uh, if we go to our website right now, oops, I'm not on Chrome. So if we go to our website right now, 
you can see one of the first things we have is companies we've worked with. And we talk a lot about working with software brands. And one of the biggest software brands we've worked with is Workday. So that's obviously in our list of logos. But you just want to make sure that you are building social proof and credibility for your brand so that they have a high certainty in working with you. So we want to lead with a few different features that your product has. Lead with the most beneficial features. So because people are just going to be scanning through your page, they're not going to have time to read every single feature. And then we want to have a very clear uh, plan on how they can get started. So data has shown that if you show your onboarding in just three simple steps, it doesn't feel overwhelming for the user and they're more likely to get started. So having a how it works section on your homepage is very important. Uh, one popular way to do it is just if you're a SaaS company, um, get started in three easy steps. Step one, create a free account. Step two, choose a plan. Step three, lead with the main benefit that your software offers. And then we want to start sprinkling in some more social proof. You want to sprinkle in as much social proof throughout your page as you can without it looking odd. In fact, we've seen some landing pages that convert very high and I would say about 70% of the page is just sections on social proof. If someone sees that you're solving their problem for other people like them, they're going to work with you. So you can never really have too much social proof. So we want to have some more social proof, but then we also want to sprinkle in some more features. So about at this time in the page, if someone made it this far, they're going to start reading a bit more and they're going to start looking at your product a bit more. So this is where we can start diving into some of the more robust features, talk a little bit more about the features. Um, if you're a SaaS company, you want to make sure that your feature sections includes, include high resolution mockups of your SaaS product. Um, one example that I give a lot of times is ClickUp. So ClickUp is one of the biggest project manage management tools on the market. It's actually the one we use. Um, but if we were to go to their homepage, or actually before we do that, if we go to the, if we go to our ClickUp account, you can see how it is very complex, it's very robust. There's a lot of options. We have our sidebar here. We have some secondary navigations. Um, you can see the UI is very robust. It's because there's a lot of features in ClickUp. But if you go to clickup.com and you start scrolling down through their page, you can see they're giving screenshots of their product, but it's removing a lot of the noise. So for example, um, Right here, they are highlighting their search feature called the ClickUp Brain, but they're only highlighting the actual search interface. They're not just doing a general screenshot of the entire app with the search included. They're dumbing down the screenshots to only show the relevant information. That is one of the biggest issues we see with software companies on their website. The companies who built their website with a low budget will usually just include general screenshots of their product and it can tend to look um, not as trustworthy and not as clean. So you want to uh, just take uh, dumbed down screenshots of your product. You can usually just hire a designer to help you with this and you will be good to go. But that's what we want to include in our features section. As we scroll down, you want to make sure that you have a FAQ section on your homepage. So like I mentioned earlier, take the most common questions you hear from your customers and include at least six or seven of those questions in an FAQ section on your website. So you want to treat your homepage as like a sales call. So on a sales call, you're going to pitch your product or pitch your service and then you're going to be presented with objections from the prospect. They're going to have questions about the price or they're going to have questions about um, how the onboarding works or, or something similar to that. And you want to make sure you are answering those early stage objections bef uh, on the homepage before they have to even go to another page or book a demo with you. You want to make sure that they're getting those questions answer answered. And then we want to have another version of social proof. So at least have two or three 
sections on your homepage that are dedicated to social proof. And here in this section, this is highlighted as like stats. If your service has any stats applied to it, such as it's reducing the their, their workload or it's reducing uh, a specific metric in their business, such as customer acquisition or time or something similar, you want to do just a quick calculation on how much time or how much money you're saving them, include some of those stats on the website, preferably tied with logos of companies that you've helped. And uh, that makes a good social proof section. And then we always want to end the page with another call to action. In an ideal world, they land on the website, they see they browse your features, they see all the companies you've helped, and then they get to the bottom of your page and they are ready to get started. And having a clear call to action at the bottom of the page kind of just puts that bow on the wrapping, if you will. Um, also, as we scroll through this page, you can see we have con uh, call to actions throughout the page. So we want to make sure in almost every section, we're just nudging the person to take an action. So that sign up for a free account, book a demo, or something similar. And then what you want to do is after you have your page built with this type of structure, you then want to start A-B testing and split testing. So we're going to dive into A-B testings first. Um, but before we get into that, if you are interested in A-B testing, we have a full guide on how to set that up. There will be a link to that video in the comments below. But basically, with A-B tests, we want to test things such as messaging so different headlines or different call to action copy and then with split tests we want to test different layouts of the page so for example a split test for this page we may try to try to split test uh, putting the call to, uh, putting the social proof higher on the page so maybe highlighting some reviews maybe putting the image of the product to the left I mean to the right and putting the content to the left. We just want to split test different variations of the page as well as A-B testing different messaging. Um, because at the end of the day, you can have a good idea of what works, but you're not really gonna know for sure unless you test that. I was recently on LinkedIn recently and saw someone who posted um, the results of an A-B test they did. And by simply changing the call to action, they increased conversions upwards of around 15, uh, 50%. So even a small change in a layout can uh, make a lot of difference. So this is a quick overview of how uh, to structure a winning landing page. If you want more information on how to optimize your landing pages, we have a free guide that is a 148 point landing page checklist where you can go through your homepage, your pricing page, your signup pages, all of your main pages that people are visiting so that you can optimize those for a boost in conversion so you can ultimately reduce acquisition costs. So I'm going to link to that resource in the description below. It's entirely for free. Uh, but if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and we'd be happy to get back with you.